हाँ जी डॉक्टर साहब हम तो फिर कंटिन्यू करो सर जी माइक ओपन करें आपका माइक म्यूट है अरे हेलो माइक म्यूट था तो आज हम आज का सेमिनार शुरू करते हैं डियर फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट इन आवर टुडे सेमिनार as you know this seminar this uh, seminar activity is part of our dash event calendar and it is carried out on every thursday at 2 pm today the topic of our seminar is future of food production and modern farms and it is being presented by dr usman ali abasi assistant professor department of horticulture i hope this scientific talk will provide an opportunity to get in depth knowledge on the topic After the presentation, there will be question-answer session where participants can ask their questions. So over to Dr. Usman Ali Abbas. Dr. Usman, can you hear me, please? Hello. Assalamu alaikum and I hope uh, uh, Dr. Farooq, uh, I hope you can hear me and all the participants. Okay, so let me share the screen with you and I can start the. Thank you. Okay, so hope uh, my screen is visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. we can see. Uh, thank you very much uh, dr farooq uh, and uh, first of all uh, i would like to start with the name of allah the most beneficent and the most merciful the one who give life and everything uh, and again uh, thank you dr farooq for for uh, inviting me for this talk uh, for for the uh, including me for uh, for the Uh, dear participants, uh, I think it is a connectivity problem, internet connectivity problem, and I talked to Dr. Osman and hope that he, we will resume this activity again in a few months. Okay. Uh, 
Please wait and I appreciate your patience. Okay, so uh, sorry, uh, I apologize. I had some connection lost and now I, I'm back again. And uh, let me share my screen with you people. Okay, so I hope things go remain good in terms of connectivity. Okay, so basically I was talking about that today we're gonna discuss about uh, the, the future of food production and, and modern farms. Okay, so the very first thing that came to our mind that why we need food. Basically, this is the most important question we have uh, in our mind and why we need food. And for that, uh, we all know that obviously to fulfill uh, hunger and the nutritional requirement of human beings. So if we, if we look at uh, the next slide, you can see here there is a live view of uh, world population in real time. And at the moment, uh, we are uh, 7.9 billion currently. And today, almost uh, uh, we have an increase of 2, two lakh and 27,000. And overall, for this year, we have more than 100 million people included to this uh, population. So roughly, if we can estimate around about 2 to 3% per second, we are adding to this number. So it means as per estimate, if we keep on going like, like this, if we keep on going like this up to 2050, we're gonna reach 9 billion. And as per that, uh, our population is growing for, for that reason. We also need to fulfill the, the food requirement for that population. And the estimate says for that uh, to meet the, the requirement of 9 billion people, we need to grow as much as now we are growing. So we need to double our food production in terms of uh, feeding the people, the population that, that we're gonna have up to 2050, that's gonna be roughly 9 billion. So this is the basically the, the most important factor that, that's concerned us, that we need to feed uh, each and every mouth and to, to help them to fulfill their nutrition requirements. Okay, so the, the, there are certain things that we need to discuss that uh, there are factors that that affecting food production. Obviously we know the soil and water and maybe temperature, these are the primary factors that play the role in terms of uh, food production, but there are certain other things that that limit the availability of food to the to the public or maybe to the to the people and uh, and there are several several factors I mentioned here. The one of them is population growth, as I told you earlier, and then climate change. Obviously, uh, a very big dilemma of our society at the moment. Currently, we are facing huge uh, crisis due to climate change, and then food losses. We all know that uh, whatever we produce, around about one third of that. Uh, goes to waste uh, due to mismanagement and due to post harvest losses and all other things. And then there is a segment for disease and pest attack. Obviously, the, the disease and pest also contribute to birds, uh, the limiting uh, availability of uh, uh, foods. And then nutrition health, obviously, a food is nutritious. It's it's more readily consumable in care, in terms of if it's, if it's not healthy or maybe it's not consumable for the, for the people. Then the last but not least, uh, agriculture productivity and innovation. This is also very important fact, and we're going to discuss about this one as well uh, in today's talk. Okay, so as you can see here, the water, which is very important resource, and uh, all the fresh water we have at the moment uh, in this world, out uh, the fresh water from that seventy percent is used for the production of crops. So you can you can imagine that how much amount of water is required for the agriculture. The currently the way we are. Uh, dealing with uh, the crops or the currently the method we are using for the cultivation. So uh, all the fresh water we have, 70% is devoted toward the production of agriculture. Only 30% is utilized for the domestic uh, needs. Uh, okay, 
so if we can look at the the statistics and you can see from 1980s there is a there is a thing that we call the the world global crisis and as we proceed uh, in the in the coming generation as, as the population is increasing the number of people who are uh, ha having shortage of water the number is increasing day by day and currently up to 2015 it's it's 58 percent around about 3.8 billion people out of 7.9 billion currently and and by now up to 2022 i think the figure even raised up to 70 percent or 65 something so you can see from all that we have more than uh, a billion people that lived in southeast Asia and also North Africa and Middle East, most of the, uh, the area, if obviously the Pakistan is light also in this in this area. So that's the reason why uh, with the passive time daily, we are hearing about the people are, are, uh, are suffering from the scarcity of water. So as you can see, uh, with the global warming and with the climate change, we are also facing a problem with the water crisis and the availability of water. And as I mentioned earlier in the previous slide, that what we are using right now, the 70% of water, maybe in future we don't have that enough water to, to support our cropping system, the one we are using at the moment. Okay, so there are certain uh, things associated with global warming that you can see greenhouse gases. Obviously, when we talk about global warming, we can't skip the greenhouse gases. So there are several types of greenhouse gases. You can see um, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon. These are the mixture, and they combine towards make uh, ozone, uh, nitrous oxide, methane, carbon dioxide, and water, water in a vapor form. And as as you can uh, know, but uh, as you know about this one, the methane that is almost twenty eight percent stronger than uh, CO2. So you can take the uh, uh, the uh, the course in this way that how much methane is toxic in terms of uh, uh, increasing the greenhouse effect globally. Uh, if, if one molecule of methane is available, that acts like a 28 molecule of carbon dioxide. On the other end, the, the next thing that is N2O, nitrous oxide, which is 265 times more stronger than CO2. So I will just give you some, some graphs here in the next slide, as you can see here up to 2020, this is the latest thing. The countries, how much carbon they are emitting in, into the atmosphere. So China is leading on the top and then United States, India and Russia and Japan, Iran. So you can see uh, China leading combinedly, maybe you can see is the most, uh, uh, is the most biggest producer of CO2. So depending upon these conditions, we need to think about how we're gonna mitigate uh, the carbon emission so that we can uh, tackle the climate change. As you can see uh, in agriculture, maybe whatever this, uh, there are different sectors that, that are contributing the ca carbon dioxide or carbon emission. Uh, here is a graph that, that is showing the electricity production, 27%, agriculture, almost 19%, and transportation, 60%, and buildings are roughly 17 and manufacturing it includes different kinds of uh, processing like cement processing, uh, fertilizer processing and other processing industries, they, they, they produce 31% of the uh, uh, carbon emission uh, throughout, if, if you can look in, in this scenario. Though agriculture is 19%, but we need to focus this one that how are we gonna uh, reduce? There is a need to reduce the emission. And for that, what we need to do, we need to uh, cut down at least 10% of this emission by the uh, by the coming uh, decade or maybe the, by, the, by the coming five years. So then we're gonna manage uh, this uh, crisis of climate change. Uh, so for that reason, uh, we came together, the, all, all the world came together and, and, uh, and we have the Paris Agreement in 2015, where we, we mentioned that uh, up to 2030, we're gonna keep the global temperature, the, the world temperature up to 1.5. You know, with every year there is a rise in temperature in in in, uh, in the atmosphere, and that that what we call the global warming. So basically, in 80s or maybe in the last century, uh, and currently it's one degree higher than the than the 80s. The 80s, in a sense, like in in the in the last century. So from last century to today, we are one degree higher. And if we keep on moving with this pace, and uh, then maybe there is no. Uh, point of return for us. So up to 2030, if we reduce or if we keep uh, the, um, uh, the increase in temperature up to 1.5 degree or uh, estimate says if the end of this century, if we keep the rising temperature up to two or within the limit of two degrees Celsius, then it's gonna be uh, safe for us or we can manage things sustainably. Otherwise it's gonna be a big disaster. So for that, uh, the, the, the UN organized different kind of events and also COP26 is one of them in which we, we 
commit to these things that we will reduce our emission up to 2050 to 0% from currently, as I mentioned, and they're 19% in agriculture and 27% in electricity. So up to 2050, we plan to reduce that emission up to zero. So uh, we call it up uh, 2050 is gonna be the zero emission year in terms of carbon dioxide. So as you can see, carbon dioxide is not that toxic, but it's as compared to methane and, uh, and other than like nitric oxide, but in agriculture, some portion uh, is, is associated with the production of methane and also the livestock is responsible for the production of methane. Okay, so here is the sustainable development goals and there are 17 of them. And as you can see, the, the, the importance of uh, this food is that it's on the second number of in, in sustainable development goals uh, uh, established by the United Nations, and that is zero hunger. And then obviously on the 13th, we have uh, climate change or climate action, and then obviously clean and, and availability of clean water and availability of clean water for every person for drinking. So you can see all these things are very important. That's why they are the key factors or maybe the important factors that we need to address uh, and also it's, it's the agenda of, uh, of sustainable development goals from issued by the United Nations. Then if we can, I can give you the example here uh, that how we're gonna change uh, this scenario, how we're gonna cope up uh, with, uh, with this changing climate and, and other resources that we are shrinking in terms of water and other resources as well. So I can give you an example of urbanization when in the past, if you can take uh, we have uh, single story buildings and people used to live in the single story building and then with the progress of urbanization uh, when the people move toward from villages to the to the city side and uh, due to the shortage of uh, space uh, there is a come uh, there is a there is a innovation came and that is building a multi story building so transferring from single story building to the multi story building is is uh, one of the key factor and keeping this in view i suggest that we need to uh, also focus toward uh, an, another a very innovative technique that is uh, vertical gardening or, or vertical farming. And it's it's very important and most of the countries um, in the world they're adopting this one. And I think it's a best utilization of the space in terms of uh, uh, resources and also in terms of uh, production. So there are big names like Bright Farms and Aero farms and also iron oxide and plenty of them, they are producing these kinds of vertical farming technologies and they are uh, producing uh, very nutritious and, and rich crops and they are also marketing them. So these things are possible. And with this one, we also need to add, uh, as you can see, because vertical farming is far more better than the conventional ways. I will share some slides in, uh, ahead that, and also better than the tunnel farming or maybe layer house farming. And then you have, uh, these LED lights and you need to control all the things artificially rather than providing them some uh, some sun uh, so you can provide the light source artificially. Uh, so with this one, you can uh, have a comparison here, like standard farms, if you can see, uh, 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 almost 2.9 kg per meter square, we can produce of lattice and that use almost 250 liters uh, of water per kg production of lettuce. And also, mostly we know these big farms are very far from the society and you need to transport the goods almost up to 2000 miles uh, for, to transport them from the farm to the market. Uh, on the contrary, if we can, if we can look at the other side of the, the vertical gardening or uh, the, the new inno innovation in it, and that is, as you can see here, there is another comparison that that vertical farming, on the other hand, uh, use or produce up to 80 to 100 kilograms per meter square, and also use very less amount of water, around about one liter per kg uh, of of lettuce, and and also the mileage they they need is less because most of the vertical farmers are near the urban sites, and uh, most of the urban sites they have these farming facilities where you can utilize the upper space or vertical space, and you can grow these things. Okay. Okay, so with, with this one, as I, as I mentioned earlier, that the, the lights, you need to provide thing artificially. There is another graph that I want to share with you people that, that the price of these vertical farming, how the, it is reducing, uh, just in terms of, I can give you the idea of uh, the, 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 the solar, solar energy that in the beginning, it's very costly and later on, it, it, the price of the solar energy per watt is reducing. Same in case of uh, lightning of LED bulbs that is used for this vertical gardening, as you can see, starting from uh, almost 70, dollar 
to and the lifespan is almost uh, to, to 20,000 hours. And at the, at the moment, it's below uh, the each bulb LED bulb is below one dollar, and and the, the lifespan is up to 50,000 cycles or 50,000 hours. You can say so. These are the factors that with the passive time we are adopting different things, and all uh, we are trying to improve this thing. Okay, so with this one, we can see there is more carbon in soil in the uh, than in at atmosphere and all, all the plant life. So soil is the main factor uh, which contributes or which contain a, 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 a huge amount of carbon as compared to the uh, carbon uh, available in the atmosphere and also the plant life. So basing on, on that one, we need to bring uh, to low tillage or zero tillage practices, or maybe we need to change our uh, culture practices in terms of so that we can conserve our soil. And this is another way we can conserve uh, the, uh, the carbon uh, uh, emission at all we can reduce the carbon emission by by reducing all those things up, uh, if we can reduce the the tillage and also adopt these technologies just like vertical farming there is another thing that that i want to talk about uh, the, the the another innovative technique that is uh, very important that is precision agriculture and precision agriculture is very important as it's it's a kind of a linkage between vertical farming in vertical farming you do also use different tools of uh, precision agriculture to adopt uh, uh, maximization of your crops and also to get maximum benefit out of uh, a small land. Okay, so these are the factors. There are different kind of sensor, remote sensing, and also uh, you can use of the drones and and uh, the heat map system and also uh, geological surveys and contributing all these data and these big data and utilize them for the production of uh, vegetables and, and uh, different crops like short season crops, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the previous slides with reference to vertical gardening. So uh, maybe uh, uh, th th these things, or maybe uh, for, for some people, these things are very difficult to understand. Maybe they, they, they feel that it's very difficult to adopt such kind of a cropping system in vertical, like vertical cropping system, or uh, you can say the precision agriculture, maybe it's very expensive, but I want to give you an example of the computer, the transition of computer in, in late seventies, you can see the computer was just like uh, the one uh, in the picture number one. And in the, in the early 2000, we have a, a form of computer like this. And now in 2022, we have a very small pocket size uh, computer or laptop that is available uh, in front of us. And I think each and every uh, one of us is using these devices. So I feel maybe it's not that difficult if we can manage all those things like producing such a huge computer to a pocket size within a, a, a year, within a passage of two decades, I feel. So I think it's not it's not difficult if we can if we can focus and put our efforts toward this thing and adopting the new technologies like vertical gardening and precision agriculture into our uh, conventional uh, agriculture system. And that's the need of the R. So the, lastly, the, it's our the, the thing that that bring us hope. It's it's our power to invent that make us hopeful. Uh, that's uh, said by the the big greats once that uh, obviously the the human being they have the power to invent and make new things and and these uh, inventions are the hope or the intelligence of human being are the hope for the survival of mankind uh, and also the survival of the earth. So with this one. Uh, thank you very much. And if there is any question, please uh, let me know. Thank you.
Uh, yes, I think, uh, sir, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, I think there are no more questions. If there is any question, please let us know from any participant. I think there are no more questions. Uh, so, thank you very much, Dr. Osman Ali Basi. It was really very informative talk on this subject. And uh, I, I, I would also like to thank all the participants for sparing their precious time for participating in this uh, seminar. Uh, our next seminar would also be again on next Thursday at the same time of the week. Thank you once again for all the participants. Uh, thank you, Dr. Farooq, for, for inviting me for this talk and also for the participants. And if there's any question, please, you can also send me the email or maybe you can send in the chat later. I will reply in case if, if there is some issue with the connectivity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Smith.